What is up, everyone? This is Nick here at NJ's Bricks, and today we're going to go and take a look at the fall 2024 LEGO calendar. I got this in the mail recently, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to take a look at what is coming out, what LEGO is pitching to us for new sets coming up this fall. There may be a little bit of overlap with my August releases video, but I'm not sure. I haven't looked through this at all yet. So this is you and me checking this out for the first time, unless you already got it and you've seen it already. But let's go ahead and open this and take a look at what is coming up this fall for LEGO. So they're starting off with some Dreams advertisements here. I have yet to build anything from the Dreams series, but I will say that they look pretty cool. I like a lot of the minifigures in this series. Some cool printing, some neat characters. I really, really, I mentioned this in the last video, but I love this new puffy vest piece. I think it's new at least. They have it in red and blue, and I think that's an awesome piece that people can use to uh, customize their own minifigures as well. Remember, guys, if you like this content, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. It's like less than 10% of the people watching this video right now are actually subbed, so it'd be great if we could boost those numbers. I'd really appreciate it. Let's check out this page two here of the fall 2024 calendar. Still looking like more Dreams stuff. This Logan the Mighty Panda, it's 342 pieces, which seems kind of crazy because it feels like there's some really big pieces there. Like this looks like one big printed piece, which is pretty sick. Uh, a bunch of big printed pieces, it looks like, on these mechs, except for the dinosaur, which has a bunch of smaller pieces. And uh, some of these could be stickers because those are actually flat tiles. But these big rounded parts here have to have, those have to be custom prints. You can just build them in different ways. They're like three-in-ones. So from that standpoint, I actually think, uh, I've said before on this channel, three-in-ones are some of the greatest value among LEGO sets because your kiddos can take them apart and build them again two more times. So, you know, when LEGO and toys and things in general are costing what they are today, any extra miles you can stretch out of your purchases uh, are very valuable. So three-in-one sets, that's pretty cool. Uh, moving ahead, still on Dreams here, this is kind of like a, I'm seeing some similar sort of colorings and techniques as the Rivendell sets, and uh, some sort of Harry Potter looking elements to this little castle corner here, uh, but it is pretty cool, I'm not really sure, Castle, Noc castle Nocturnia, 1700 pieces, so pretty sizable set and has a ton of different minifigures, I love all these little creatures. I have a small Lego city, and I think it would be really fun. I might try to pick up a bunch of these little guys on BrickLink eventually and just kind of hide them all throughout my city. I think it would be really fun. Hopefully, I have space to expand my city someday, and it would be really cool to have those guys kind of hiding all over in plain sight. Some more dream sets coming here. This is pretty cool. It's a big, like, turtle bus. Uh, I like that a lot. And then the Never Witch's Nightmare Creatures. Oh, again, it's another three. They're all still three in one. So I guess that's the kind of theme that they're rolling with for Dreams right now. We get another mech here that looks like it's on a similar complication level as the T-Rex was. So I, I like going with the three in one for the Dream sets because it's kind of hard to sell people on new themes sometimes. And if you want to get them to buy in, offering them a good value for the price is a good way to kind of get them to also buy into the theme and then perhaps branch out in in the dreams theme once they've gotten a little taste with those valuable three-in-one sets all right so it looks here like we're looking at some lego friends sets and most of the theme of the friend sets do seem to be like smaller disparate pieces that you can kind of arrange together in different ways similar to the animal crossing sets that we built and similar to the mario theme sets as well, this is like a big, bit of a bigger set here, Adventure Camp Water Sports, uh, $70 for a 628 piece set. Not too terrible, but honestly a little bit pricey for um, something that is LEGO themed and not licensed. You want to look at the prices of any of these back here on the Dream sets, but yeah, they seem to be a pretty consistent 48 to 434 pieces, like pretty close to 10 cents. This one, you know, 457 pieces for $45. So not too bad. This mech here is, you know, 130 bucks for 1300 pieces. So about right on point. Uh, the Dreams seemed like slightly better value than some of these friend sets. Like here we have $130 for uh, about 1100 or so pieces. 
Moving on here, some Disney releases coming up, and this is on store shelves right now. Simba, the Lion King Cub. There's a bigger, fancier one that's on shelves right now. Uh, this is a smaller, like more accessible version, honestly, $20 for 222 pieces. Um, I think this set is probably going to be a pretty big hit because it looks cute. It has some interesting build techniques, but is not too complicated. Uh, it's a fairly low piece count, and it's only $20. So I think this one's going to be a hit with kids and parents alike due to the price and the content. I think that's a nice value, especially for a Disney set. Usually the licensing, usually the licensing on some of the Disney sets can make them uh, prohibitively expensive. But that's not bad at all. Um, we got another Encanto set there. That's a cool uh, minifigure. I had the Madrigal house in my store. Another one here from Disney's Encanto. That's interesting. Then, of course, we have uh, a new Frozen set, a pretty pretty sizable one, not a huge set, but 630 pieces, $100. See, this is what I'm talking about, some of the Lego Disney sets. $100 for a set that only has 630 pieces. I mean, you're getting some minifigures there, and that's cool, and you're definitely getting some, like, yeah, larger, more interesting molded pieces, which do happen a lot with some of the princess themes. But $100 for 630 pieces is hard to stomach. It makes sense that they have a bigger new Frozen set coming out right now um, because they just announced uh, Frozen 3. So Frozen as a name is in the news cycle right now. Then uh, another based on the live action Little Mermaid. It's a cool little set there. Uh, I do always like the mermaid pieces. I built a clamshell. Thought that was a pretty cool set. Built that on the channel a while back. You can go check that video out. But I liked all the mermaids and that. Did some shorts for those as well. We got some new Harry Potter sets coming out. A new Great Hall. It feels like there was one not that long ago. Like I want to say I built one during the pandemic. So it must have been 2019, 2020. I guess it is five years ago at this point. So uh, as much as it feels like this is kind of back-to-back -back Great Halls, it's really uh, not the case. Um, but I like how this one is going with the theme of like the chamber and some of the other recent sets. Uh, in that it has some of the foundation and dungeons and other related uh, structures underneath the castle. Uh, this one's nice and tall, so a bunch of detail packed in there. I really appreciate that. I like how it's open on this backside, so you can see what's going on in the Great Hall. I think if you're a fan of Potter, this is a pretty awesome set. It's $200 for a 1700 piece set, so it's definitely pricier. Um, but if they're trying to make, you know, uh, like Star Wars generally has a kind of a flagship larger set that lands somewhere in the 150 to 200 dollar range at any given time that's not quite uh ucs scale um but is a great play scale with a lot of details and a lot of minifigures and it looks like that's what you're going to get there with this potter set a couple of smaller ones two more building storefronts if you're working on a diagon alley and eventually i'd like to have enough city space to have uh, Diagon Alley going on in my city. There's an Ollivander's here and Madam Malkin's robes. So those are some nice additions. And these sets are really great. They're generally only like storefronts, right? But it's very easy if you have a large collection of bulk bricks to build onto them and make them more of a modular type size, uh, which is what I would intend to do if I ever get a chance. Minecraft here with some new sets. I never really played Minecraft, but I do think their sets are cool as a theme because it's very, you know, the it's so analogous, the bricks and the, the aesthetics, the visuals in the game. So building sets that look accurate to the game is uh, super easy. And they give you all these cool little printed parts to make that even more of a reality. And I like how you can mix and mash them all together to create your own little Minecraft universes. I think this set's really cool. I believe that this came up in my August set review, uh, what was coming out. So this one might be on shelves right now. But it's 90 bucks for 1,200 pieces, just about just under 1,200. I know a lot of them are little. But that means you get a ton of fidelity and a ton of detail in a small package. Uh, I think most people can probably uh, sympathize with not having a ton of space to display things. So having these huge UCS type sets can really be a burden if you don't have that space. So I like smaller sets that tend to pack a ton of detail like this. I think that will be a hit for people, the crafting table. We've got a couple new Sonic sets coming out here. Uh, they look okay. Uh, I haven't bought any of the Sonic sets except for the one that was like uh, Green Zone Stage 1 or what have you. That was pretty cool. I guess it is sort of similar to the Mario theme in that you can put some of these sets together to make like a course or a level, right? Some new Animal Crossing coming, which is exciting. Finally, we're going to get KK Slider. People have been uh, waiting on that minifigure for the new Animal Crossing series of sets that have 
come out last year. And uh, Isabel, I think this is just a different uh, torso print than the previous one. Then we're going to get the plain guy. I don't know everybody's names, but that's pretty cool. And another character here that I don't know, but you got to have the Dodo Airlines so that you can go and fly to your friend's island. That's a really key uh, addition to the line. And I will say, I have said this on the channel before, and I did a whole review of all the Animal Crossing sets that were released thus far. Individually, these sets are not very exciting. They are pretty boring and not like, from a display standpoint and a play, play standpoint, they're a little disappointing on their own. But when I got all of them and I put them together and I'm trying to figure out all these different ways that I can arrange my island similar to in the game, it was a pretty satisfying experience. So uh, if you're a fan... You definitely want to want to pick up multiple sets from the Animal Crossing series so you can use that modularity to create your own island. Here's some more Super Mario sets, you know, continuing on in the theme of like modular sets that want you to play with them and move them around in different ways and set them up in different ways. I really like this set here, the battle with Roy at Peach's Castle. For $65 for a 738-piece set is a pretty great value, and there's a lot of big pieces here, like this giant molded castle top with the bricks in it is very, very cool. Um, so I think this set looks like a really great value and would be a cool addition to any Mario display setup. Oh, another really cool Mario set, in my opinion, right here. That's King Boo's Haunted Mansion. And again, these Mario sets seem to be great value, especially considering that there must be licensing involved. $75 for a 930 piece set. Anytime you can buy Lego sets for under 10 cents uh, per piece value, that's always going to work out well. This Bowser train looking pretty cool as well. So a number of Mario sets coming up this fall. Now we're back with some more regular uh, Lego City stuff going on here. Pretty neat like tourist double decker bus here. We got a little train station. I like this little roller coaster. That is pretty cool. Like one of those a little fancier than uh, one of those little roller coasters you might see that gets moved around at a fair. But I like the scale of that. Ninjago. I've never been too deep into the Ninjago, but I do like some of the more building-focused sets that they've released, like uh, City Gardens. That'd be a cool one to add to my city if I get a chance to expand. But it looks like there's some really reasonable prices in Ninjago. $150 for a 1,700-piece set there. Uh, we got $99 for a little over a thousand pieces there. So as far as value goes, not too bad on the Ninjago front. That's a cool looking mech. They do seem to do a lot of mech related builds. And then here's some new Star Wars stuff coming out. Some of this I already mentioned in the previous video. Some of it I haven't. Um, I'm not too satisfied with the build of this. Like it's so my problem with some of these Star Wars like more displayish focused sets for adults that they're putting out like this one here is you're paying $55 for 382 pieces and of those 382 pieces probably uh 75 percent of them are there to build this complicated base look at all this snot work and all these bricks that are actually involved in building that base when it's really like you could get 85 90 percent the same effect by just like having a few plate pieces that were connected together it just seems some of these display sets are overcomplicated for no real reason. But of course, I got to say the five minifigures you're getting with this set are fire. Huge fan of all the minifigures that are coming in this one. There's a lot of print detail in all of them, and I really appreciate that. But using most of the pieces in the build itself and, and just to make this complicated display base, I'm not a fan. This C-3PO set, however, I think is awesome. 140 bucks for 1138 pieces is a little on the pricier side but it scales with the R2-D2 that came out more recently, and they look great together. So this is a set I may find myself picking up if I do pull the trigger on that R2. I keep looking at it, keep getting close to buying it. I commented on this one on my video. I think this is going to be a miss. Uh, $100 for any like play-focused set. like This set this clearly would be geared more towards younger audiences, but it also costs $100. Um, these, uh, to me, the scale of these is just a little bit too large. I think if they had made them a little smaller or perhaps reduced it, the count to two droids and the set cost closer to $50, they'd have a better chance of success. But I think given the audience, it's, it's looking to satisfy children, but it also costing a hundred dollars. 
that makes it a little bit tough for that set. I don't I don't think that one's going to be a hit. Uh, and then we have a new Star Destroyer coming out. I can't remember if this was in the last video, but I'm hugely disappointed in this because to me, it would be a slam dunk that this should have been the Chimera. Same ship, same scale, just a little additional detail, uh, you know, with like the gold pieces from the repairs and, you know, the underside of it. But you could have given us this Thrawn figure in that set. Could have given us more of these. You could have given us an Enoch figure. Like, I don't know why this wasn't the Chimera. I, I guessed in a previous video on this channel when I was talking about sets that they should make, that they were going to make the Chimera. I thought it was a slam dunk. Didn't happen. New Jedi Bob Starfighter. I don't know the whole lore behind Jedi Bob, but I believe it was just like an unnamed Jedi minifigure from an old school Lego set that became known as Jedi Bob in the original one. I believe is expensive. Here's another one of these two uh, these tool ship sets, and so my problem with these is that generally these ships of these scales, like these are their play ships. These are a very swooshable size, like a decent size. You can fit minifigures inside of them but they're made to pick up and you can fly them around. They're not the highest of detail, but they're not really low quality either. But putting two of them together in a play-focused set, you know, you have two kids flying these ships around or one kid flying them both, but it's $110. And I just think it's really tough for them to have play-focused sets that are $100 and up. Like the $100 and up range needs to be geared for the most part towards more sets that you are expecting adults to buy. And I think some of the sets like this one or the customizable droid set are going to be less appealing to adults, but they have adult sized price tags. So it's a little bit tough for me with some of those sets. Dark Falcon. I think I commented on this in the last video. I'm going to be buying this one. I think it looks awesome. The, I don't know why it's not showing us pictures of all the minifigures it comes with, because that's one of the most appealing aspects of the set comes with a bunch of great minis. Definitely going to be getting that here. We're looking at some new Marvel stuff. Uh, we've got this little Iron Man brick heads. That's kind of cool. Thor versus Surtur construction figure. So it's like a buildable Surtur figure uh, along with a Thor minifigure and another little like Surtur minion for 30 bucks. I think that's a pretty cool set. I think kids are really going to have fun playing with that Surtur. So that's cool. We got a new uh, Avengers set here with some really great minifigures at $50 because you're getting that Hulk big fig. That's always valuable. And then a Black Widow, a Chitauri, uh, looks like Loki and Captain America. So that is, again, $50 for 347 pieces is a little tough for me. But getting that Hulk big fig, big fig and a couple other nice minis in a $50 set, is uh, that definitely makes up for it a little bit. Similarly over here, like this is tough, $100 for a 613 piece set. That's hard. But you are getting a lot of minifigures in this one. Hulk big fig, Iron Man. Captain America, Thor, uh, Hawkeye over there. You get one, two, three Hydra henchmen and uh, Black Widows in there as well. So you're getting the all the original six Avengers in this set here, plus three bad guys, nine minifigs. So I can see why it has a $100 price tag despite the low piece count. But I actually do think this set might have some success because getting all of the original six Avengers in one set is... That's valuable for people. People people are really going to like that. Uh, Dancing Groot here. Not sure how I feel on this set. Uh, price to piece counts pretty decent, but um, I don't think it's one that I'll be getting, but I do think it's probably one a lot of people will enjoy. I'm really digging on this Avenger Carrier. So it is $80 for a 500-piece set, but there is a fair amount of complexity that's gone into the design of this thing. And I've mentioned it in prior videos, but the new line of Star Wars ships that are micro scale, so they're quite a bit smaller than the UCS version. They're quite a bit smaller than the UCS versions, but they have a similar level of detail. Those are a lot more practical for most people, especially people like me that rent apartments and don't have a ton of space. There's nowhere I can put that giant Millennium Falcon, even if I could afford it or wanted it. But I do have room to put the smaller micro scale ships that they've put out recently. And I think those are great value. This is in the same kind of territory. You're getting a high fidelity of detail in a set that is actually a practical size for display for people that have limited space. This is one I'm I'm going to think real seriously about picking up. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, a new Milano. I always like when they can put out uh, models with a lot higher fidelity and accuracy, and I think this does achieve that. 
I think it's a significant upgrade over the previous Milano, and $180 for almost 2,100 pieces is good value. Again, I don't know why they're not showing us all the minifigures for some of these more expensive sets. If you want to convince someone to spend $180 on a set, you should probably include all the stuff they're getting in this picture here. I think that would really uh, help their cause for some of these more expensive ones. Some cool smaller Batman sets coming out. I like these. This face looks... Okay, so it's like a... I was going to say, this doesn't look like a minifigure. No, it's like a buildable figure where you're building him right onto the bike. That's kind of wild. And is this movable shoulder arm legs? Just kids create pose. Okay. For some reason, I thought this was like a pullback, you know? Like, and then shoot, you can let it ride off. That'd be sick. Uh, this has been out for a while. This uh, Gotham Skyline set. Um, I'm probably not going to pick it up, but it does look pretty cool. And I'm sure that uh, the Batman animated series fans are going to be uh, big fans of that set, even if I don't think it's great for me. Uh, Lego Insider, yeah, if you're not an insider and you like to buy Lego from Lego, become an insider. You just basically get free rewards points that you can use to get exclusive things um, or use to get discounts on sets in the future. We've got a few Speed Champions cars, really digging on the Ferrari, really not digging on the NASCAR. It's just a hideous color combination. And this front part of the hood is too, like I know the cars are more flatter and like not super rounded off necessarily, but this is too squared. It just doesn't look right. The lines don't look right. This McLaren is pretty sick though. I like that. Um, I'm not a fan of the Technic cars personally because I hate building sets that have so many pins and holes, but these two both look pretty good. If you are a fan of the Technic cars, it's hard to go wrong with the $50 price point ones. You always get a lot of pieces because a lot of them are small and pins and whatnot. But um, 800 pieces for $50 is a great value. And the builds are usually fairly complicated and take a bit of time. So I think the $50 Technic cars for people that like building Technic are one of the best values in Lego. This uh, giant Volvo truck is pretty cool. If you're into Technic and you're into cars, these bigger vehicles they do, they must sell pretty well because they, they come out with them fairly frequently, the big construction vehicles and similar. A couple of really complicated cars here. I love the P1. I won't ever buy this. I won't ever build this. If you love Technic, go and get it because the P1 is a sick car. Like the uh, G500 as well. That's pretty cool, but definitely much prefer the P1. And I'm pretty sure this showed up in the August video. I'm out on this yacht. I feel like I feel like the audience for this is just super niche. How many people are really into yacht racing? When's the last time you can remember hearing someone talk about yacht racing if you're, you know, not in that circle or adjacent to that circle? It's also $120 for 960 pieces. So I'm out on the yacht set. Uh, the Lunar Rover is pretty sick, actually. I think it looks awesome. I'm going to get one built just like it, but with a car motor that make it tree legal. That'd be sweet. Um, but it is $220 for a 1900 piece set. I'm not sure how successful this one is going to be. It looks kind of cool, and if you're a Technic Space fan, you're probably still going to get it, but uh, I think the more casual fans are going to pass on that set. And then down the last few pages, here's some Lord of the Rings action, and I'm sure you all, I'm sure most of you all have seen this before this one's been out. This is the Barad-dur from Lord of the Rings in Mordor, Sauron's Eye up top. That set is sick. Uh, I don't have it personally, but uh, it's one that I could definitely see myself buying at some point in time for sure. Expensive for $460 for sure, but uh, almost 100 more pieces uh, than the cost at the 10 cent mark. So 5,400 pieces for $460 is great value. And then we have some new botanical ones. This was the last video on the channel. We built a Plum Blossom for $30. I think that was a really fun build. It looks really great displayed in our apartment. I'm less a fan of the uh, chrysanthemum because while I'm not a big flower expert, my girlfriend knows quite a bit. And mums usually grow like a bunch of them in a bushel. So I don't really know when you would ever really have one or two mums in a, a vase like that. It's not really how you would grow or display mums is my understanding. So weird weird to me there, but definitely liked the Plum Blossom. Wildflower Bouquet has been out for a long time, but I'm pretty sure it's a popular set and they keep pushing it. Um, and at the $60 price point, it's a really lovely display. 
option. The roses are cool, but it's just too specific for me. I like the variety in the wildflower bouquet. And I don't have the tiny plants, but there are some really cool little succulents in there. Moving towards the last few sets here, we have the Bumblebee Transformer set. And it is a smaller scale than the Optimus Prime set, just $90 here for 930 pieces. Um, so I, I like to think that this one will transform better than the other set and be less finicky. Uh, but those who get the set and build it, you'll have to let me know because I'm not likely to get that one. The Lamborghini Countach here. This is pretty sweet, and it is $180 for 1,500 pieces, though, which is a little tough. Seems to be quite a lot of engineering here, though, to get these lines just right. And the lines do look pretty darn good compared to the real car. I have to give it credit for that, um, but not one I'm likely to pick up. Last few sets here. This has been out for a long while. We did a video on this a while back, the Polaroid one-step camera and uh, that was one of the most satisfying sets I've ever built because the mechanism in there that pushes out the photos is so satisfying so you slide the photo up in there and you click it in place and when you pull the shutter there's a real visceral feedback you get from the shutter button then you hear the loud click and the photo just goes out the front and it is extremely satisfying tuxedo cat cool looking set I'm probably not going to buy that one um, but if you have a tuxedo cat or you're a fan of tuxedo cats, I'm sure you will. This Dungeons and Dragons set has been out for a long time. I will say it looks super cool, um, but uh, it's not one that I'll be getting myself. I think it was originally based on a submission to like Lego Ideas or whatever. Saw some people complaining about the way the final version of the dragon ended up coming out. But I do think the scale of it's cool with the little cottages here so that the dragon, uh, you can see how big the dragon is in relation still a set that's out and uh we got the jaws set last but not least on the rear here and this is a pretty cool one 149 for 1490 pieces so that's basically right on that 10 cent per piece mark of course you're getting jaws and some people were saying that he looks a little too happy and not quite angry enough but honestly i think that makes the set a little bit more endearing like he's just out there doing shark things man but i do again have the same sort of complaint of so many of the pieces are going into these bases here to make these display sets. And honestly, I had the same complaint about um, the number of pieces that went into building the whole frame of the Great Wave set. Building a picture frame with 800 to 1500 Lego pieces is like the least efficient way you could build a photo frame, period. Um, it's just needlessly complicated and costly. And like, I get, they're not going to be like, here, build this thing and then put it in a frame. Like they're going to give you like a Lego built frame and people are buying it and I understand it, but I don't like it personally. And it's the same kind of complaint when they have these really unnecessarily fancified bases that they build up for some of these display fo focus sets. That being said, if you're a fan of Jaws, you're probably going to pick this one up. It is pretty cool looking. And I'm sure it would look neat on a nice display table or credenza in the house. So there you go. That is the fall 2024 calendar from Lego. Got some interesting looking sets coming out. Not too many sets where I was like, this is going to be a huge hit. This one's going to, you know, I don't think there's a lot of super fire sets that are coming out this fall. But there's a lot of good value across the board. A lot of interesting sets from every theme. Basically, every theme has at least one or two good things to offer. And uh, I'll be really interested to see what some of their winter releases are going to look like. Thanks, everyone. Please, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. And stick around to see some more videos in the future. And go ahead and check out one of the videos here or here. And have a great day.